This is Gemara Bamatia Daf Lamid Dalid. And we began the new barak yesterday, Barak Hashem. And we're holding four lines from the bottom on Lamigimul Amid Bees. And we may just finished discussing the din in the Mishnah that if someone, if the Shaymer had the item Ningnavai Oinevda, stolen or lost, and he decides he does not want to swear, he's not interested, he doesn't want to make a shvua. He could make a shvua and be potter, but he does not. And instead of making a shvua and be potter, what does he do? He goes and he pays. If the ganov is subsequently found, and the ganov has to now pay kefel or dalarvei, meaning the ganov did not admit to that which he did wrong. If he admitted, my dibikinas pot. If he did not admit, then he pays kefel or dalarvei four or five times if it was tavach umachar slaughtered or stolen. Slaughtered or sold, excuse me. Who does he pay? The cave to whom does he pay? The Dalad Vahey. Then the Din said the Mishnah is he pays to the Shaymer. Because the Shaymer paid for the item, therefore it becomes for this, such a purpose like his item. And he collects the Dalad Vahey. Asks the Gemara four lines from the bottom. Lami Gimlam and Beis. Maskev la Rabbi but you cannot give over something, be makne, something to someone else before it's in the world. And therefore the question is, when did the original owner, when was the original owner able to give over the animal to the shamer so that now he could collect the kefil? At the moment that he became a shamer, it wasn't his item. It then got stolen. He decided to pay for the item. Now we find the Ganov. So when did the Shomer create a Kenyan on the animal so that um, he gets the cable or the hay? Hey. And t- continues the Gemara. And the, again, the obvious issue is cause of the cloud, cause of the rule, that one cannot give over something in the Magna Davar, cannot give over something that's not yet in the world. And says the Gemara, and even according to Rameir that holds you could give over something that in the world, that's only in a specific case on Emili, the fruits of a tree which are going to come. Avil Hacham, in our case, can't say that it's Avidi Asu. You can't say it's going to come as we turn over to Lamedal and Aleph. Why not? Number one, Miyemar. Dimingnava, who says it's going to be stolen. And even if it's going to be stolen, who says that we're going to find the Ganif? And even if you're going to tell me it's going to be stolen, even if you tell me to find the Ganif, who said he's going to pay, so I asked the Gemara, when was the Shaymer able to make a Kenyan so that he's going to collect? This Dalid Va hey. Amai Rava answers Rava Nase Koimer Loi. We make it as if the original Bailim says to him, Lichishati Ganav, when and if in the eventuality that it is stolen. Vitirza Uta Shalmani and you decide that you want to pay me, pay me. Hare Parasi Kinir Lachame Akshov. We make it as if. And Rashi on the third line points out at the time that he gives it over. Why? Because the Rabbanan know that the Bailam are happy for such a thing in the eventuality that they'll be able to get back payment from the Shaymer. And therefore there's a Kenyan retroactive back to the original moment that the Shar is given over. Ask the Gemara further, Masla Rav Zeiram. Seven lines down, Yachi, if you think the seven letters are Nami, if there was a Kenyan Me'achshav, if we make it as if the original Bailim gave over the animal for the moment of the original Mesira, the moment original the animal is given over, then even the shearings, even the offsprings should go to the Shaymer. What's the problem? Aloma Tanya, why do you learn it in the Rais? Because we give the seven letters. Ela Amar Rav Zira. Oh, we have to fine tune it a little bit. Nase Koimer Loi. We make it like he said to him that the owner said to the Shaymer, Chot Mikizay Sel. 
It's as if he said to him, you'll be coined it retroactively, acquire it retroactively, however, with the exception of the sharings and the offsprings. Says the Gemara, my Pasca. How do you know to say this? How do you know that the owner wants to give him over a except for the sharings and the offsprings? Says the Gemara, you know why? Stama de Milsa is what? Shvacha de Asa me Alma of an Inish de Makni. Shvacha de me Gufa of an Inish de Makni. That which comes from the animal itself, Shvacha de me Gufa. The Giza Isel, the Isel, the shearings, the offsprings, that the owner doesn't want to part with. But that which comes me Alma, that maybe he'll be stolen, and maybe he'll pay, and maybe the Ghana will be found, and maybe all the maybes in the world that the owner is willing to part with. Lashine number one. Ikid the Amri, the second way of learning Amar Rav and Asa Karmel Alech Shati Gana Vitirta Tashal Meini. Stamach le Gneva Asa. Now me Achshav. A moment before the Gneva, we could create a halachic clause. Kenu Yelacham. It's going to be kind of to you. Says the Gemara, my Benayu, what's the difference between the two Terutu, Mik Benayu, Koshya, to Rav Zeira. Rav Zeira is Kasha, because that's not a Kasha anymore. Why not? Because there is no Gizay Sevla, they says the Shemur is only being kind of the item a moment before it's stolen. Inami, the Kaima Ba'agam, in which then they will not be able to make a Kini in a moment before it's stolen because it's not in the Shemur's Rishos. We continue with the next part of the Mishnah, about 15 lines down at the Tudat, Shilei Malay Ratzali Shava, quoting the case in the Mishnah that if the Shemer decides to pay and not swear, that's the case we're discussing, that he gets the Kefal eventually. It doesn't mean that the Shemer actually paid for the animal. Elek even Shamar once the Shaymer says, Hareini Mishalim. I would like to. I'm ready. I would like to pay. Then Avishal Shilem, even if he doesn't actually pay, in the eventuality that the Ghanav is found, etc. etc. We'll go to the Shaymer. Asks the Gemara. Tanan, we learn to the Mishal Shilem the Ratzali Shava. Clearly, what does the Mishnah say? Shilem! What does Shilem mean? He paid! Ask the Gemara, Shilem in Loi, Shilem Loi. Says the Gemara, no raya. Ema seifa, nish, pav l'ratz l'shalem. If he swears that he doesn't want to pay, time with the l'ratz, all l'ratz, all l'ratz, all l'ratz, So we have a classical stira, a contradiction between the Rish and the Seifa. Therefore, says the Gemara, from the Mishnah's wordage itself, El meha, leka l'mashna, mi, no. Says the Gemara Tanya Kavase de Rav Yechlam. We tried as a kind of show of the Mishnah. It didn't work out. Says the Gemara. Let's bring a, a raya to Rav Yechlam to this din of expressing interest to pay is enough. Says the Brisa. Ha Soicher Para Mechaveru. Someone rents a cow from his friend. Vinigdavan it's stolen. Vomer Hala Rini Mishalit. And the person who rented it says, okay, I'm going to pay for it. It's been an issue. I'm not interested in swearing to what happened. So what do we see? We see clearly that by clearly expressing that he's willing, that is, that is enough. Omar Rapapa says Rapapa, um, seguing slightly into um, whether this sin would apply by a Shemer Chinam, the case that we just quoted, the riot to Rabbi Yechon was by a Shemer Sachar. Says Rabbi Papa, Shemer Chinam, Kim Shemer Peshati, Makna Lake Fela. If the Shemer Chinam says, I was negligent, and that's why it was stolen or lost, that statement itself allows him to be kind of the Fela, meaning because he's basically admitting fault. By saying he was negligent, now he's going to have to pay for the story. Explains the Gemara, Dibai, if he wanted to, he could have said, no, I don't know, it was stolen, it's not my fault. From the fact that he said for Shanti, he obligates himself. By obligating himself, he is kind of the eventual capable payment. Similar, 
Shomer Sacher says Rabbah, but Kim Shem Nengva Maklik Fela. Why? Do you put the Nafshim Shvur Amazing? Because it said it was broken or died. Shoyel, a bar of Shomer Nengva Shalem, Loi Maklik Kefel. But by a Shoyel says Rabbah, but this thing does not apply. Why not? Because we might have a little Mifta Nafshay. How could a Shoyel have been pottered himself? Shoyel is Chaim for everything aside from Mesach Machas Balacha. So if we would have said Mesach Machas Balacha, Mesach Machas Balacha, it's not common, and therefore he would not make such a taina. Ike Diyami, another law, Shalom Rabbi Vashal Nami. Kim Shamrani Mishali, Makli Kfila, Dibai, why? But then Hashem Mesach Machas Balacha. So the second law says that a pauper is not bothered by the fact that it's not a common thing to happen. Since you have a way, you could have pottered yourself. That's enough. Amle Razid, Hachem Rabbayo. Shayel Achi Yishalim. No, a Shayel is different, says Rav Zvid. You have to actually play. My time, huh? Hal Chalad Shalai. Vidibura, Leimakta, like Fila. Since a Shayel gets all the benefits, therefore, mere words is not enough for him to get the Kefal. Tanik was in Rav Zvid. A Shayel Parame Chavir of Nigva, Vinignivan, who was stolen. Vikidema Shayel, Vishilem. So what's the exact same words as the Mishnah. And how do we explain the Mishnah, even though it says she lame? Be Omar, that he wants to be. Ochlami be Omar. So too, the same thing in this price. It says the Gemara, no, you can't say the same thing in the Mishnah. Me, Tommy. Hasab like a tani kidem. Hachik tani kidem, my kidem, kidem be Omar. He came forward, he came early, that he's willing to pay. Kidem be Omar. Says the Gemara. Hamadik tani gabi soicha be Omar. Vagabi shoyel kidem. From the fact. From the change of terminology in the Braisa. By the Seicher, what it say? Omar. By the, excuse me, by, yes, by the Shoyal, what it say? Kidem. Shema mina davke ketani. Says Gmar, no raya. Midi gabi adadi tanya. Therefore, we can't bring a raya. They weren't necessarily written next door to each other. Shalinu le tanoi dvei rav chia, v'dvei rav aishia, v'amri gabi adadi tanya. They were indeed learned together. And therefore, for the fact that the Braisa first says Amr and then says kidem, it means he actually paid. And therefore, it is a kasha on the second Lashon of Rav Papa that says that if one wants and expresses to pay, that's enough. But rather, we're going like the first Lashon. When it comes to a shayel, you have to actually pay. Continues the Gemara on the same theme of the obligation of the Shemer Pshita. Two lines from the bottom. Omar Eini Mishalim. He says, I'm sorry, I will not pay. Chaz of Omar, Har Eini Mishalim. Meaning, we have a Shemer, the object is lost. He says, I'm not paying. And then he rolls it back. He says, you know what, I will pay. Hakam Har Eini Mishalim. Once he says, I will pay. Therefore, we don't care that he richly refused. And therefore, he makes a kidney on the item. Alamar Harini Mishalim, but says the Gemara, what about in the flip case? What about if originally he says, you know what? I'll pay. I was the Shaymer, the object is lost, I'm willing to make good, and I'm going to pay for the item. I don't want to swear. I'm going to pay. But then the Khazar Omar, and then he rolls it back and he says, Any Mishalim, I don't want to pay anymore. My what's Allah? Mi Amrinon Mahadir Kahadir Bay. Do we say that Lamaisa is Chaiser? He's Chaiser, and therefore, if eventually the, the Ganif is found, he doesn't get the Kefel. Or maybe no. Or maybe he really wants to pay. Pushing him off a little bit, but the same Kenyan would happen. And therefore, if the eventual Ganif is found, he would indeed get it. Question number two. Three lines down, Glamadal and Mabis. Amar Hareini Mishalim. He says, I'm going to pay. And then, unfortunately, he amazed before he got a chance to pay. Vamru Banov. Ain't on a Mishalim. The kids say, that's ridiculous. We're not paying. My. Me, I'm reading Mahadik Hadir Boo. The kids could back out of the father's original admission to pay. I double Milsadabu. And Kaim Ayut Chut Kamat Chle. They're trying to push them off. Case number three. Again, we have a whole series of cases. And the question in all these cases is the fact that. The person, the children, etc., switched 
whether he is willing and agreeable to pay, does that remove the Kenyan from him? Most notably, if we eventually find the Ganov, whom would get the Kefil? So case number three, eight lines down, I'm telling him a base. She lame banim my if the children paid, the children paid my Matzi Amrlo Kiak Nikfila Vukhan. And then we find the Shaymer. What do we say now? Do we say that the original owner could say, when I was a Makna, when I originally gave over the cave, it was only to your father. Why? I only did it to your father because he did favors for me. Proof is he was willing to watch my item. Let it go to you, the children. I don't like you know, there's no difference. Case number four. Shilem Lebanim Mai. Let's say the original owner died and the Shaymer paid to the children of the owner. Mai. Matzi Amr Lei Kiak Nilacha. When I gave it to you, Avuna Kfeila. When our father decided to give over the Kefal, Davatz Lanichan Avshes, because he did something for him. Avu. Analadi done. But for us, Lai. And even though the fact that you paid us, we're not giving you the Kefal. Or there's no difference. Case number five. Shel mu banim le banim. The shimer was nifter. The bailum were nifter. And each child paid to the respective ones. My, do we say the same shayla? Do they get the kefal or not? Case number six. Shilem mechsa mai. What is the story if someone paid for half? Shal shte parais. He borrowed two parais. And he paid for one of them. By, well, excuse me, this is another case. This is a, another case. Shal shtei parais. Shal shtei parais. V'shilei machaz me'amai. Shal min ha-shotvim. Shil nechem me'amai. Shotvim shel shalu v'shil nechem me'amai. Shal min ha-isha v'shil nebali me'amai. Isha shel shalu v'shil nebali me'amai. So we have a whole list of about 10 different cases what do we do in all these stories? And says the Gemara, one ant, swooping answer, take you, we're going to have to wait for Elian Novi to answer all these Shilas. And we wrap up today with the, uh, really the depth of this din and the Mishnah we've been discussing. We've been discussing in reality the entire day, the din of Paik, that the Shemer decides he does not want to make a Shvua and instead of making a shvua, he decides he's going to pay. What's the halacha now? So we said in the Mishnah that if the Ganav is eventually found, the Kefel, the Dalad Vehei, goes to whom? Goes to the Shaymer. So it sounds like from when you read the Mishnah that the Shaymer gets off scot free. But says the Gemara, Amar Avuna, Mashbi and Isai, Shvua Shein Even though. The Shaymer paid. Why did the Shaymer pay? Because he doesn't want to have to swear. There are still other Shavuos that the Shaymer is obligated to pay. He has to swear that Lamaisa, the object, is not in his Rishos. My time. Well, what's the reason? So you got to be worried, says Rav Huna, that maybe the Shaymer just decided he wanted the item. And therefore, he says, he claims when it's time to go to he doesn't know where it is. And he pretends that he's making a go, that he's going to pay, quote-unquote, for the item. But it's really sitting in his backyard. So one shvua, says Rav Huna, that he has to make is that he has to swear that it's on his possession. Meisvei asked the Gemara, Hamal ve'eslevei If someone lends money to his friend, with a mashkin, with a collateral, vavara mashkin, he loses the mashkin, vamar loy, and then when he asked to be repaid, sella visicha love, he said to him, I lent you a sella, shekel ayoshave, and the collateral, the mashkin, was worth a shekel, which is a half a sella, and therefore, the malva says, you have to pay me back to sella, and as well pay me back to shekel, vavara mer loyki, and you lent me a selah, and the mashka was worth a selah, so I don't have to pay you back anything. Again, he's paying him back the mashkin. So if he's paying him back the mashkin, that fulfills 
the payment for the item. So he says, if I gave you back the mashkin, I don't have to pay back anything else. And therefore, what the halacha says, the Mishnah on Shavuos, pot. Such a case, the borrower is potter from any shvuah because he didn't admit to anything. He's a kaifer bakal. We know that Allah is, you only have to pay if at some level there was a, an admittance. Case number two in the Mishnah over there. Sela yivisich Allah. The lender said, I lent you a sela, shekel ha'yoshav, and it was worth a shekel, so you still owe me a shekel. So we here we begin that the live is partially admitting. Because he's saying it was worth three quarters, meaning I still owe you a quarter. Chayiv, then the halacha is that the live has to make a shvua. It's a classical case of a maitav and mixas. That if you admit in part, you have to make a shvua. Case number three. Salvi senior love beza yashava. So now the Malva says, listen, I lent you a cellar, and guess what? The mashkin was worth two salayim. Again, because he's quite practical. And the fourth and final case, Sela Yisini Alav, Shnayim Ayyashav, and the Lever responds, Lemer Loki Ala Sela, Hel Visich Alav, Hey Dinarim Ayyashav, then Chayim. Then he's Chayim, because again, it's a case of Maidim and Mixas. Before we continue, let's just speak out something obvious just to play out the case. The Malve is the one with the mashkin. I think that's why this was a little bit confusing in some of our brains. Because again, I give you $100. You give me a collateral. So when I go back to collect the money from you, I have your collateral. So if the collateral is equal to the value of the loan, then okay, we can wipe it clean. You don't want to have the money to pay me back. Great, I'll keep your collateral. But what if the collateral is worth less or the collateral is worth more? That's where we got involved in this Mishnah. Then in case two and in case four, the loive is admitting partially he has to pay. He's saying, listen, I, owe, I borrowed 100 bucks from you. The collateral that you have is only $75. I still owe you $25. Those are the cases that there is a shvua. So says the Gemara, me nishma. In case two and four, when we said it, there's a shvua, who swears? Misha bikadon etzlai. The malva makes a shvua because he has to be kadon. Why? Why does the malva have to make a shvua? Shema Yishva zeh. The Yitzhak Allah has to be kadon. Because we never could create a scenario in which your shvua could be thwarted by the other person. So we don't want that the loyva is going to swear that the malva is going to pick up the bikadon. We can't have such a case. Ahai. On what case are we discussing? Ilema seif of itzoma case number four. Vatevikle, who cares? The shvua gabe malvehi. Let the Tana say that the shvua is on the malve. The ha ka maidebe mixes ataina. Because in case number four, the malve was the maidebe mixas. So why do we say that the reason was because he might pull out the shvua, pull out the item? Ela mershmola reisha. We're going on case number two, where the loyv admits that the mashkin was only worth three quarters of a dinar, meaning the loyv admits he still owes 25, a quarter of a sela. Maya resha, a sefer de resha. And we repeat the case. Sela, we see chalav, shakal ayashav, evalay aymer, and the loyv says, like he'll sell if he see me a love. Shaysha dinar em ayashav, like we just said, so he's being mighty, he still owes him. Chayif, tishvua gabe loyv ahu. Really, the loyva should be the one making the shvua. Because the loyva is the one that is mighty and makes us. The Omer Rabbanon, it comes on the Rabbanon, and they say, Lishtava malve. See the Rabbanon? No. Even though the loyva is the mighty and makes us, the malve should be the one to swear. Why? Shemi Shavazev Yotela has to be gotten. Okay. So that was a long and lengthy winded Raya that the reason the Malva swears is because we don't want him to pull out the Shvua. So how is this a Kash and Rav Huna? Rav Huna was the one that says that there's a Shvua She'enar B'Rishusai Ve'em Isa as we turn over to Amit Hey Amit Alf I don't have the page in front of us Ve'em Isa Lid Rav Huna 
Now, according to Rav Huna, that there's such a shvua that it's not Bershusai, even though Mishav Amalvish in Bershusai, once Amalvish wears it's on his possession, hey, Chimazi Mavikle, meaning, let the wife and make the shvua a regular mind that makes us admit it to part. Ah, you're worried the Malva might take out the item. What's the concern? Rav Huna already taught us that the Malva has to make a shvua that it's not in his rishos. So all my Rava says, Rava, she is edim shenisra for the only time that the shvua in that Mishnah and shvua is, is transferred to the Malva is when there are edim that the mashkin was destroyed by a fire. So in such a case, the Malva does not have to make a Shvua She'inner Bershusai. And therefore, the Malva is the one that makes such a Shvua. Iyachi says, Gemara Meichim Aisila. So what's all concerned that the Malva might pull out the item? Elam Rav Yosef, Sheyesh Edim Shenegnava. The same Kayesha. Soif Seh Meichim Aisila. Tetarach Um Aisila. He might go find it. Find the Ganif and bring it out. So when the Malva swears, the whole concern was that it was stolen. So we don't let the Malva swear, we let the Malva swear. Why do we let the Malva swear? Because he might go and find the Ganif. So maybe the Malva will swear, then the Malva will go and find the Ganif. Says the Gemara, Vishlama Malva, Yadam and Kyle, the nothing beast. The Malva knows all the people who are in his house, so he knows who could potentially be the Ganif. Also, Tarach Um Aisila. There's no concern that the Loiva will go and get the item. And that's why in this case we switch the Shvua from the Loiva to the Malva. But it is not a Kash in Rav Huna. And Rav Huna does stand the test of time that Lamaisa and our Mishnah, even though the Shemer wants to make a Shvua that is not in his, Rosh- that Shemer wants to pay, excuse me, and not make a Shvua, says Rav Huna, the Shemer still has to make a Shvua that it's not in his Rishos.